All right, are we recording? Yes, we are. All right, so awesome. This is like part two from our first, last week we did Formula for Transformation, and Jessica, you're in Bob Heilig's program as well, so I don't know if you went through this um, on there before or not, but this is something that, like I told you guys last week, I did like two years ago or something like that, and it just is always something that keeps coming back to me because we always have a circumstance. We always have thoughts that revolve around that, which then affect our feelings, which then affect how we go into action, which then affect our result, ultimate results. And so um, I did put the recording from our call last week on our team page. So if you guys weren't on here, you can catch it on the team page. It's called the Formula for Transformation Part One. And then this part is the power of belief, which just re going through my notes and things for me going through this again has, I have different things that have come up in my life. There's different things going on in our world than there were two years ago, or even throughout my three year journey in Plexus that now I really, really need to be using this and working on my belief and where that's coming from. So we're going to just dive in and get a little bit deeper in this. And I've got my amazing notes that I rely on. And I've got props tonight that like, this is amazing, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, so the power of belief. Oh, you know, and as I was preparing for this, like all day today, off and on, just different things would come to me. And it's like, okay, I know how to work through this. Just do that. And when you do work through it, you do get your plate, your mind in the right space to then be able to go out and get into action and have, re and then ultimately have results that we want. But boy, goodness, I hope this hits you like it has hit me. And I'm going to tell you this. I said to my husband, I said, I really hope that they find value in this tonight and can use it. And he said to me, and you'll get this after I go through this. He goes, well, what if they don't, what does that mean to you? And I said, it will mean that they're not ready. They're not ready to hear it. They're not ready to change. And he's like, good job. My old self would have said, what if, or I hope they find value in this tonight. My old self three years ago would have said, had he asked me that question, what if they don't get value out of it tonight? I would have probably said, then I'm probably not a good leader. I'm probably not delivering the message right. I'm probably not good enough to do this. So therefore I'm not even gonna do these calls anymore. And I would just get frustrated. That might've been me three or four or five years ago. But obviously that's not me now. <laughs> Cause I said, if they don't get value out of it then they are not ready for it, <laughs> right? So you'll understand what I'm saying once I get through this. And it's very, very powerful. The power of our belief. So in this training, we're going to talk about hidden, uh, a hidden force that shapes all of our thoughts and our feelings, and it dis, dis, dictates every aspect of our behavior. It's a force that underpins every action we take and how we interpret response to the world around us. This deeper commanding force is our beliefs. And we have a lot of beliefs going on in the world right now, like just turn on Facebook. <laughs> just scroll your newsfeed and it's like boom 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 all these people like with these core deep beliefs beliefs are hidden scripts that run our lives just like a track running a train um it determines where it's going and how we get there our beliefs either propel us forward or prevent us from living our fullest potential in our life they determine whether or not we fail or whether we succeed and how we define success in the first place. How do we even define success in the first place? So what is belief? A belief is something you know with absolute certainty. It's a thought that you've decided consciously or unconsciously is your truth. They become such a big part of our identity. We believe that, that they are us, but understand our beliefs are not us. Our beliefs are in our habits. 
habits of automatically thinking in a particular way. We hold on to certain thoughts over time and it becomes our belief. So, so true. They cause us to view and experience the world without even thinking. Beliefs are, in effect, a story. And that story comes to define what we believe to be true and drives our behaviors that create our results. Beliefs are a story that you've made up and they can end up limiting us in a really, really big way. Our beliefs become the lens from which we see and experience the world. Your beliefs are the master commanders of your feelings, your actions, and your results. It doesn't matter what's true, only what you believe to be true. One thing is certain, if you don't believe something is possible for you, it isn't. It will be done, period, end of story. Limiting beliefs guarantee limited results 100% of the time. In order for us to transform our lives, we must first make a change at the level of our belief and get to the root cause. We know this word, root cause, right? <laughs> we deal with this with gut health. We deal with it when we're talking to people, we get to the root cause. This is the same thing. Um, getting to the root cause, it's like, um, a tree and its roots, its roots are where it gets its nourishment. And that at the root is where your beliefs truly, truly are. Um, where do our beliefs come from? Studies show that most of, uh, some of our most pivotal beliefs are forged during significant emotional experiences, many of which happen in our childhood. Right now, as I'm talking, you can probably think of different things that happened in your childhood, whether it was positive or a negative experience that molded your beliefs. And you still could have, you know, that, that in a positive way, that's great. If something happened in a negative way, it could still be affecting you today. The stronger the emotions, the more likely that they'll shape our lives moving forward. Many of our most many of our most deeply held beliefs and convictions are actually hand-me-downs. <clears throat> they have come from people like our parents, teachers, family members, friends, maybe childhood friends, mentors. Anybody relate to that? <laughs> maybe at some point in our lives, something happened to us and we either accepted someone else's opinion of us as truth or interpreted the situation in a way that would, that, that would end up limiting us in our lives. Then this, then this kicks in, it's called confirmation bias. And that is where we are constantly looking, we can find what we need to feed that belief, if that makes sense. So a good analogy would be if you have red sunglasses, and imagine that you have those red sunglasses and the, and the lenses in those sunglasses are also red. So the red lenses represents all your limiting beliefs that you have about your life. Maybe it's something like, I'm not good enough. So you put on these glasses and you look out into the world and what do you see? You see red, red, red everywhere. That's confirmation bias. So we see what we're looking for. And that's how your mind can work against us. Or that's how our minds can work against us. So the truth is, though, you guys, that the world is not red. It's not just red. It's full of rainbow colors, lots of colors for us all to experience. But you don't always see those colors because all you can see is the proof of what you choose to believe. I love that analogy. Love, love, love it. You know, if you're, if you're buying a car, you're looking at a certain car and like when I was looking for a Jeep, all I saw, like, I'm not even kidding. All I saw were Jeeps, like everywhere. I was like, all of a sudden I'm going to buy a Jeep and oh my God, everyone has a Jeep. There's one, there's one, there's one. There's one. So you, you see what you're looking for, right? I mean, that's kind of a weird 
story, but I don't know. You guys have probably had that happen where you're looking, you like, I know this car is what I want. And then you see that car everywhere. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. So it's time to take off the red sunglasses. There's a lot more to life than those red sunglasses, those red light stories, I like to call them. So come to a new reality and that you intentionally design and a new reality that's going to empower you. Amen to that. <laughs> I gotta get a drink of water. Since all beliefs are a choice, that means they can be changed. Yay! <laughs> Changing your beliefs doesn't have to be hard. It just takes awareness, desire, practice. Not just listening to this. It actually takes, yeah, and I'm aware, like right now you're probably aware of certain things and you might even have a desire, but then after this call, it's to go practice and change the things and put in the, the work to get to where you wanna be. So there's two types of beliefs. Now I get to get my fancy little thing out that actually you can read. <laughs> I thought for sure this was gonna be backwards. Oh, now the question will be, can you even see it all? See my little, my, my light in the background? I might have to turn that off. Is that better? Okay, you really just need to see A and B. You don't really need to see all the rest of it. But, so there's two types of belief. One is cause, and the second one is meaning. And for the cause, you know, you guys have probably heard me talk about red light stories before. Red light stories are stories we tell ourselves that aren't true. And green light stories are the stories that actually like is the truth. So this would be the cause would be that you believe if you do A, that B is going to be the result. And just examples of that would be, I'm going to do a Facebook Live. Um, people are going to think I'm stupid. So you're thinking, or you might be thinking, if you do A, it will result in. If I do a live, people are gonna think I'm stupid. People are gonna think things about me. If I do a Facebook live, people are gonna laugh at me. Maybe I'll stumble, maybe I'll fall. So it's constantly limiting beliefs. To me, this is like fear, just completely fear driven, right? Fear takes over and that's the cause. And then the other part of this is the meaning two types of belief, cause, and then meaning, this is where you actually attach a meaning to, if I do A, B is going to mean something. So this is like a deeper level, another layer deeper than the cause. So this takes you into more of, um, if I do a Facebook Live and there's no comments, no hearts, nobody looks like they're even looking at it, I'm, that means, I'm not good enough. So does that make sense? If I do A, B means, I do a Facebook Live, there's no comments, no hearts. I am, not, I, now I, I feel like that means I'm not good enough. Maybe you've sent a, a Facebook message out and someone says no, that might mean, you're gonna give it a meaning, it might be, I'm not a good communicator. It means I'm not a good communicator. Forget it, I'm not even gonna send any more messages out. Maybe it's a Facebook post and you get some negative comments and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, people are hating on my stuff. That must mean I'm not liked by anyone. I'm not gonna post again, forget it. I'm not even liked by anybody. So it's, we need to interrupt that pattern of all of these. And those are red light stories. Those are stories that we make up about ourselves. It's not true. So if you do a Facebook Live and you don't get comments or hearts, it doesn't mean that you're not good enough. What it actually means is, even if one person sees that video, you could bless that person. So it's turning it around to mean something positive. So really it's like recognizing when you're taking the thought and making it mean something, actually asking yourself, is that even true? And then changing that around to the truth with something good, replacing a negative thought with a good thought. 
So if one person sees it, it could change their life. So I've done a Facebook Live, no comments, no likes, but that's okay. If one person sees it, it was worth me doing it because it could change their life. If I message someone and they say no, instead of saying I'm not a good communicator, forget it, I'm not gonna message anybody, we can turn that around and say, it's just not their time. They said, no, this isn't a good fit for them. And that's okay. That doesn't mean it's something about me. It just, it's about them. It's not their time. If I do a Facebook post and there's bad comments on there, haters coming out, guess what? <laughs> oh, says, if you don't have haters, you're not being loud enough and you're not living out loud enough. Because everyone is going to have people that criticize, make fun of, mock, put down. And that just means you're being loud. You're putting yourself out there. And the right people are going to see your content. The right people that God's going to bring into your life are not going to be the naysayers. They're going to be the people who really need this. But we can't attach meaning to it if someone is hating on something, right? Successful people simply do two things. They choose to envision a positive result for their future actions, and they assign different meanings to the things that happen in their lives. So right there. Attach a positive meaning instead of a negative meaning. So here are five clues to areas where you may have limiting beliefs. Maybe one of these sounds like you, maybe not. There's my cat knocking on the door as he always is. <laughs> He's going away, okay. Um, five clues to uh, areas where you may have limiting belief. Um, one is you feel as if your power is limited. You just lack power. Two, and I mean, some of these, one of these or two of these might be, you guys might resonate with you and maybe none of them will, but two is you feel a deep fear or a deep discomfort in an area. A limiting belief will cause what should be a simple stretch of one's comfort zone to an absolute paralyzing and completely uncomfortable. I know at first when I started Plexus, there were probably some times when I felt like massive, deep discomfort and and I would just be like paralyzed. <laughs> so I had a hater once that just called me out on something and it it literally stopped me for like the weekend. And it was just dumb. It was just it was ridiculous, but I let it happen and thank the Lord. I decided to not make what that person said about me and I decided to stop attaching a meaning to it. Because what they said literally did stop me in my tracks for a couple of days for the whole weekend. I stewed on it for the weekend. I let it ruin my family time. I mean, this person didn't even deserve that I even allowed that interruption in my life. You know, they were just being rude, completely rude. So anyways, you might feel a deep fear, deep, deep dis discomfort. Uh, number three. Maybe you are comfortable. And the flip side of that is maybe you can't perceive any area where you're holding back. Everything is going well. You hardly experience discomfort or fear. Here's the truth. You are holding back your deepest gift and impact, and impact back and avoiding offering your authentic self to the world. I mean, basically, we should always be pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone. So if you're literally sitting in a place where you're like, I'm comfortable, I don't feel fear, discomfort at all, then you're not actually stepping out and doing anything new, which is definitely not going to grow you. It's just going to make you stagnant. You're just in a comfort zone. Um, number four, you tell yourself stories. We tell ourselves stories and make excuses in certain areas, feeding our limiting beliefs and our ability to interact with the world in our empowered way. Um, Maybe say things like, make up reasons or excuses why you don't have results. You make up things why you don't show up to things. Um, 
telling, telling yourself these stories that really are just victim stories of our relationships, work, or spiritual life, blaming others in a way that takes <clears throat> responsibility off of yourself. And then the fifth one is um, you look to distant objects to hope you will feel better. We think something is wrong, so we spend tons of energy, money, and time trying to fix it. The achievement trap will destroy your present enjoyment in life. And that's, that's where you think that you always have to have more to be happy. When I hit this rank, then I'll be happy. When I hit this financial status, then I'll be happy. And until I get there, I won't be happy. That's an achievement trap. And really, what I've learned is that we need to be happy throughout the process. Because if we're not happy and embracing life through the process and loving it, then when we get to that place and reach that goal or reach that financial status, then we're still not going to be happy. Nothing will be good enough. And that's a trap that we don't want to be in. So um, let's see. A foundational concept for overcoming limiting beliefs is learning to be okay with you. To do this, you must learn to deeply love and accept yourself. Sometimes if we really look in the mirror, we may not, um, may not be loving ourselves. What kind of things, what kind of self-talk do you tell yourself every day? We can be really hard on ourselves. And think about the things that you might say to yourself every day. Like, would you tell that to your best friend or would you tell that to your daughter or your son? No. But like, why do we do it to ourselves, right? Um, we can't give to others if we don't give to ourselves first. This kind of goes into last week. We talked about how if your, comp, if your cup is empty, you're never going to be able to fill it, fill someone else's cup. So it's super important to be taking care of ourselves. And grab a drink. So to start with, um, start to love and accept yourself. That means taking time to love and accept ourselves. This life is your single chance to do what God created you to do. You've already beat all of nature to get this chance. So maybe it's time to stop regretting things in life and just really start living life. And you have everything that you need right now inside of you. Time to stop worrying about how others want you to live your life and start envisioning how you want to live your life. So I'm going to have you guys repeat this. because This is good. And this is on my mirror. So if you want, um, I can put this in the chat tonight. So, but repeat this. So unmute yourselves. Make sure everyone's unmuted. Okay, repeat after me <laughs> without the accent. Uh, I will never be more worthy. I will never, I will never be, more, be worthy. more worthy or deserving or deserving of the things. Of the, of the things I want in my life, I want in my life, life than I am right now, that I am right now, at this very moment, at this, this very moment. moment. I will never be more worthy or deserving of the things I want in my life than I am right now at this very moment. Yes. <laughs> so that's all I have for you guys tonight there is also like um, some homework that helps you kind of like work through all of this that I think are really good steps um, if you like to journal and, and ex get your things out like for me I like to journal I like to if I'm feeling certain things, I like just get on my computer and start typing and journaling and I just feel so much better. So it's really helpful for me to like have a question and it, which it makes me think about my life. And so I'm gonna put these, this homework stuff in our chat tomorrow. And if you wanna take this further, which I would, I really, really encourage you to. Um, 
it's going to just help you work through things that maybe right now you're not even thinking you need to work through. But if working through this helps propel you forward in your life, your marriage, your relationships, your business, and everything, then it's worth 20 minutes sitting down and just thinking and, and writing it out. It really, really is. So I'll do that tomorrow. I'll um, put it in our chat, the questions. There's about, there's just a few. It's good. It's good, good stuff. It's worth it. I don't know. Maybe I'll email it to you guys. Um, Cause if I, I hate it when I type stuff up and it takes up like that much chat and you're like, what? I'm going to email it to you. So how about this? If you want this next step to propel you forward, message me your email and then I will email it to you. And if anyone is listening to the recording, I'll put my email in the, in the comments so that if you're listening to the recording, you can email me and I'll give you the, the steps that you can um, do some of this homework and like help propel you forward. Work through some of those things. So, anybody want to share? Are you just like? Who's ready to like? We soak it in and we listen and we think. Who's ready to like actually put it into practice? I haven't necessarily been writing things down, but I am definitely making much more of an effort to be conscious of my negative thoughts and and stop myself when I realize that I am having it and trying to switch the thought around. Yeah. And it's good. I mean, sometimes like in this homework, it really can almost can take you back to when we're talking about beliefs, it can be something from definitely from childhood a belief that was instilled from parents or a friend or caregiver, whatever, you know, um, that did affect you throughout your life, whether in a negative or positive way. But I think it's a really great step when you can, um, when I first started doing this a couple years ago, I would always notice other people right away. I could notice like my daughter or my husband or my friend or teammates like I could help correct other people and turn it around for them. But then it's like, all right, let's turn the mirror on myself. <laughs> let's do the work in me. And um, there were times you guys that I would say something and my husband would say, now what would you tell your friend if she said that to you? Oh, well I'd say blah, blah, blah. Well then you need to say that to yourself. So there were times I would, I would, you know, and still sometimes don't recognize that I do it. And my husband, because we do it together, like will point out to me, is that really a true story? Or did you just make that up? <laughs> That's why he asked me tonight when I said, I hope, I hope they get value out of this. Like I have over the past couple of years and now just going through it again, I'm like getting even more value out of it. And he said, well, what if they don't? What's that mean to you? He was quit. He was just testing me. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't say, well, that means I wouldn't be a good leader. <laughs> we attach so much meaning to certain things that just aren't true, you know? Mother. And it, I think it can be a weekly thing. It just, you never know. If anyone wants to share anything that has happened, that actually something you thought that really wasn't true and now you realize or how you can turn that around, I would love to hear it. And maybe as you work through some of those ho homework questions, some stuff will come to you that you'll feel comfortable just sharing with us. I mean, I'm, I'm currently working through some of, some of a couple of things right now as well. 
just the way the world is right now. Different thoughts that I've um, believed are true that aren't true <laughs> that I'm just kind of working on. So <clears throat> as I work through those, I will definitely share them as well. I don't know if I've shared this in this group, but Tina, you and I have talked about this, how I always, I say, well, I should have started sharing about Plexus right away. So like, I can't share now because I didn't right away, you know, and you're like, what that, how did you put it? just like this? You put it, but that's not true. That's a story you tell yourself. And so when we had that conversation that day at that hell, I was like, you're right. You know what? I didn't then, but I'm going to now. And I keep sharing and I got one new member today and I have another ambassador that's like, yes, and we stop and we're going. So it's like, <laughs> yay. Yeah. Oh, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it's funny though. Right. Because when you said you had thought for a long time, well, why didn't I share right when I started? So mm -hmm. now I can't share now. Cause I'm, however many months two in and that and a half years in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, once she realized that it doesn't matter, like right. who, who puts a time limit on when you should start sharing or, or whatever. Right. Or who right. puts a time limit on, um, where you should be after so many years in a company either. Right. Like everybody, everybody's health results are different because our bodies are different and everybody's timeline, whatever we choose to do with the business, it's, there's no set time that says, hey, in two years, you should be X, Y, Z, or in three years, you should be diamond or, you know, we can't compare ourselves to other people. That can be a whole, that's a whole different call, the comparison trap. <laughs> But yeah, thanks for sharing that story. I kind of forgot about that. I forgot how long it was actually that you were in. And it doesn't matter how long you're in a company when you decide to start sharing. Right. I mean, I would do a little bit here, a little bit there, yeah. but you know, yeah. but yep. <laughs> and I knew like this girl's got potential <laughs> to share with so many people and so much to give that I knew if she shared more, she would impact more lives. I mean, that's yeah. anybody, but. <clears throat> and Christy has a warm market that we're working on. <laughs> I want a warm market. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> That's awesome. New team members are so fun and so exciting. They bring yep. such fun energy. Yep. And the one that I think she's actually going to do it this time, because she said about a year ago, yep, I'm going to sign up. And then, you know, all at once crickets, like nothing. And now I think she's ready this time. She's been watching me for a year now again. And so. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to unrecord. And then if we want to talk about things, we can. So hold on a sec.